Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Yep, it's the world's most dangerous morning show, The Breakfast Club. Charlemagne the God, Angela Yee. Uh, Envy is still running around here, taking his daughter from state to state, <laughs> visiting different colleges. But um, we have a young lady in the building named JoJo. Good morning, JoJo. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Did you get the roots taken off you? Yes, I did. You did? She Hell went to yeah. Mexico. Okay, good. Tell me about that procedure, because I be trying to tell people. Did you really believe in roots and voodoo? Um, It's not my religion. I'm a Catholic, okay. but I do believe that it's real. Yeah. Yeah, it was, does exist. Was things happening to you that made you decide to go down to Mexico and get it taken Yeah. Off? Um, well, first of all, I knew... I mean, I'm not just going to blame somebody for something, and it's like out of the blue, you know? Mm -hmm. And I don't think love and hip-hop would follow something that is completely off. Well... I don't know that, that they wouldn't, but... <laughs> I mean, well, for this particular, you know, we had to go through lawyers and stuff because it could be, like, she could sue the show for defamation of okay. character. So, you know, my producer, actually, our executive, she's into Santeria. Mm -hmm. So she kind of knew what was going on, like, on her own. And Amara says she's aware of Santeria. And have, have you ever seen her or know of her well, doing anything? Well, she practices, yeah, she practices one of those religions. So a lot of the stuff that she does, like, people don't really pay attention. Like, in the reunion, you know, she dressed, you know, after the god of the water, you know. So she does a lot of stuff mimicking you know, certain African religions and stuff. So she's really into that stuff. Mm -hmm. So when this kind of went about, you know, when you see somebody do certain stuff, like, you know... You've witnessed uh, her do things. I mean, she, she practices, you know, a lot of people in the industry, you know, practice sacrificing. You know what I mean? Santeria, <laughs> I mean, Santeria, you know, you, you sacrifice animals and stuff and, you know, you ask for stuff in return. I, I know a lot of rappers that do it. What? You, you ever sacrifice something? I've never done that. But hey, I can't wait to get into that tax that bracket. Religion. I got some hamsters out but here. But really. <laughs> just to give people the backstory, uh, JoJo and Amara were super tight on Love and Hip Hop. And right, they season no one. Longer, yeah, season one. Yeah. And the issue is that she feels that Amara put roots on her. Well, no, 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 no. See, that's all wrong. That's not what happened. Me and her fell out mm -hmm. because she has slid in my ex's DMs. This is where it all started. Who's your ex? Because I saw gunplay, you talking right? about that. No, not Gunplay. No, hell no. I don't know. I don't no. watch the show. <laughs> yeah, I was like, what are Just, you saying? Gunplay has a whole other girlfriend <laughs> on the show. That's a whole that's other somebody relationship. That said that. Right. So what happened was she had slid in his DMs, and I, I felt some type of way about slid it. Slid in how? Like, what did she say? Because when she was up here, she was acting very innocent about sliding in DMs. And, you know, like she said, she was being, uh, she had met Gunplay, and it was just about music and their career. I mean, it's happened to a couple people. You know, same with Juju. Her and Juju were really close. Shout out to Juju. And um, when she was talking to Safari... You know, she actually tried to mess with Safari. That's why Juju stopped talking to her as well. Safari's getting a lot of action. So Amara tried to mess with Safari? Yeah. So it's been a lot of little incidents. And for me, it was like, I just didn't expect it because I had her back. You know what I'm saying? All season one. What did she say in the DM? Um, It was like, what's up? And he was, my ex was like, what's up? And it was like, you know, what you doing? Just like, why are you being so friendly? Why do you feel like you can DM my ex? Mm -hmm. You know, she says it's friendly, but to me, that's hoish. So you asked her about it, and she said she was just being she, friendly. No, she had told me, she was like, I didn't think it was a big deal. You don't talk to him no more. You know, we just need a, you know, because he has a lot of money. So he was like, you know, we, we should just get some money out of him. And I was like, no, that's my ex. Like We should get some money out of him. Yeah, and then I was like, when she said I wasn't down with it, she's like, you know, I'll never do it again. I apologize. And I forgave her for it, but I just fell back. Mm -hmm. And that's when I started hanging out with Bobby. Okay. Because I was like, I'm not feeling that situation. I forgive you, but I can't really fuck with you like that. And her and Bobby don't get along. Um, She started feeling some type of way because I started hanging out with Bobby. So she was like, fuck Bobby. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But Bobby had never done nothing to that girl. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you, uh, so Charlamagne wanted to know about the process of getting the roots taken off. Yeah, I want to know what happened before. Like, did you cough up a frog? Like, what happened that made you say, yo, I got something on me? Uh, You know what was the ultimate thing? I was waking up every morning at 5 o'clock. <laughs> On, the, on dot. the dot. Like, and <laughs> I would jump out my sleep every fucking morning. Thinking about her. It wasn't that. I would just, you know, I would just wake up. And I was like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. That's what really made me be like, okay, something has to be a little off. Now, what about the people? But why that, why that time? Like, why did that bother you waking up at 5 o'clock every morning? It didn't bother me. I had mentioned it to my father. You know, I was like, Dad, I don't know why the hell. I remember, I think I was with him one day. He's like, why do you keep waking up at 5 o'clock in the morning? I was like, I don't know. And he was like, okay, something is going on. See, in our culture, like, I'm from Mexico. 
I mean, it happens. Like, people do that. People mm-hmm. can put spells on other people to fall in love. People could do that, you know, so that you don't progress in life. Like, people really do that. Have you ever done it? Hell no. Just asking. Oh, said. hell no. <laughs> I feel like there's karma in all that. Mm-hmm. Now, some people are saying for you it's karma. Because I saw a lot of people weighing in, and Amara, when she was up here, was saying, well, it's because the things that she's done to other people, it's just karma. She can't blame anybody but herself. I mean, you could say that, but... At the end of the day, I know what's up. She knows what's up. Mm-hmm. I don't think she's going to sit here and be like, yeah, I did that. Admit to it. But, I mean, she knows what's up. Now, what about your relationships with some of the other cast members? We saw one scene, and I saw a lot of people commenting, because your wig, she pulled your, Shay pulled your wig off. Right. And they didn't show wig? you. Yeah. Oh. You like it? I didn't notice that. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, how come they didn't show that on television? So The part where she took it? Yeah. Or they, they didn't show you. They just showed her holding. The well, thing. see, the way that was set up, I felt like I was set up in that scene, and I must still Seems stay like my it, ground. She, she ran because when, when I went, I walked out of the scene. I called Mona, and I was like, "Why would y'all do that?" Mm-hmm. You know, my scene because it's love and hip hop. <laughs> <laughs> you know but for me, it's like I've given so much to love and hip hop. Like nobody, most of the people on the show have sh- nothing to offer. Like for me, I bring you on my home. Like I bring you on my store. I bring. I, I brought. Ace Hood, T Pain, Brandon Marshall. I brought Alvin Kamara. Like, She's a stylist. You know what I mean? I bring all these, you know, actual people that would never come on the show if it wasn't because I asked them to. Mm-hmm. So I'm giving you all this. Why would y'all try me out of every fucking castmate? Because it's love and hip hop. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> now she was also dating Pleasure P this last season. And one day. Was a- it was a one day. It was a one day thing. <laughs> it felt longer than that. <laughs> Because they dragged it for, like, five episodes. I thought like, like y'all was, like, going out, you know, constantly. Does he still like you, or did he try to pursue you after that? Um, I feel like me and P would have never gone on a date if we wasn't both on Love & Hip Hop. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? It was a storyline. I mean, I can't, I can't say that. But, you know, I feel like if we both wasn't on Love & Hip Hop, we wouldn't have to. I'm not his type. I don't, mm-hmm. He's not my type. Okay. You know my type. But y'all are cool. Yeah. She likes, <laughs> she likes thugs. Yeah, I'm not really. You think Pleasure P a thug? No. Absolutely no. not. Okay. <laughs> he actually, um, you do you still. Him, spick him, split him, split him, slick him. Did you call him Spick No, you know. <laughs> you slick him. Slick him. Slick him. You know who I think is cute? Spectacular is cute. Okay. Yeah, He's we're my type. Married. I know, I saw that. I saw that. <laughs> hey, listen, I don't even know nothing, but I'm just saying, you know, Pleasure's not really my type. Mm-hmm. But he's a great guy. I fuck with him. Mm-hmm. We cool. We friends. Now, how'd they get the roots off you in Mexico? They, like, tell you to cough up the semen demon? The what they semen do? demon. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what they do? Do you not believe it? Do you believe in that shit being real? What you See, think about that? I'm from the that? South, right? I'm from South Carolina. Okay. So I've seen some things. I even think I've felt some things in my life. Like, it was one point in time where I thought I had roots on me. But then I did realize it was my own karma that was causing these things to happen uh-huh. to me. So I don't know. You know what I mean? I don't know. See, I'm not really into it, but I feel like it does exist. Just how there's good, there's bad. Like I feel like somebody can wish bad on you, right? Like right. I feel like somebody can really pray that things right. happen to them, but I think that they end up hurting themselves more than they end up hurting you. And that's I too up, much energy. I yeah. ended up Wishing asking bad. the person when I went to the original, I was like, why do I get up at five in the morning or all the time? And he was like- Your alarm he- clock. Keep going up. <laughs> well, yeah, he, he shut up, Charlotte. <laughs> <laughs> he had told me that that's like the um, most peaceful time of the twenty four hours. Like that's when you know people that practice voodoo and stuff. That's when they're up working because everybody's sleep, Ooh. all energies at a certain level. So that's when they practice that. So that's what he said. I went to Mexico. Whether I believe in it, don't believe in it, I still did it because I'm like, whatever the fuck this Better is, get it off sorry. of me, period. What did exactly. they do, though? Like, they had to burn sage? I don't know. What did they do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a lot of sage going on. Yeah. They had put fire around me. Yeah, they they were singing, praying, all types of I'm stuff. I'm surprised they didn't want to come film that. Oh, no, they tried. Really? Yeah, yeah, they wanted to come to Mexico, but I don't know. Leo, I think they didn't have the budget. That's what it was. Did you feel like it was off you once they did that? Honestly, Yeah. See, I think it's all about what you, Is it what all you mental? believe. I think it's all mental. That's what my mom told me. My mom was like, if you don't believe in it, that shit won't get to you. Yeah. She told me that. <laughs> Honestly, maybe. I don't I don't know. This I, is, you know, I, I don't you believed deal in with it. this shit all the time. You believed in it and that's what got to you. Maybe. And then you needed something strong to make you not believe in it. Maybe that's what it was. And then I guess seeing her practice that type of stuff made me also be like, oh, she did it. You know what I mean? Right, yeah, like, me. yeah. it wasn't so far-fetched. Like, if I see you doing something and then I feel something, I'm like, oh, shit, she really did it. That has to be stressful, though, because that was a relationship that you valued. And now it looks like 
after filming the show and everything that you guys no longer have a relationship. As a matter of fact, y'all really don't fuck with each other at all, period. Well, this is where I'm actually really hurt about it mm-hmm. because every interview I go on, they ask me, yo, what's up with you and Amara? Yo, this, yo, that. And I have never been like, fuck that bitch. I have never, you know, talked bad about her, said her business, even though I don't fuck with her and she's done some lame ass shit to me. It's like, it gotta be some type of loyalty after a friendship. You know what I mean? Right. I hate when people fall out and they just go around talking their business, talking about, like, that shit is what? But she didn't tell your business, but she did say she don't But she has. You. She has. You know, she didn't do it in this platform, but mm. it's like every other day she's on live. She's talking about me. She's doing this. She's doing that. And it's like, why can you keep talking about me? You know? And I can't defend myself because as soon as I say something, it's like, oh, well, JoJo ain't shit. Blah, blah, blah. But you can do it. You know, it's interesting because even on the reunion when it first started, um, I'm trying to remember what happened, but somebody was saying something coming for Amara, and it looked like you still wanted to defend her. Like, it was your reflex. It was my reflex. When I was looking at the reunion, I was like, why the fuck am I still defending this girl? Mm -hmm. I think it's because, like, the whole first season, I felt bad for her. Everybody was really, like, dragging her, coming for her. I didn't even know her. I met her the day that I defended her. Wow. I didn't even know this girl. So, you know, at first... I feel bad for her. I, I helped her out or whatever. Now I feel like, you know, you feeling yourself. Everybody in the show is trying to kiss your ass because, you know, they know you got a whole bunch of cloud. Mm-hmm. Now everybody want to be on your side, you know? And, I mean, I don't know. Now back to I'm you. I'm not doing that. Let's talk about your store and your styling. Has this show helped you with business? With what? With my store? Yeah, or my styling? with the styling. With no, everything. not with my styling. I mean, that's one thing I hated about the show, honestly. They, like, focused on how much money my family has mm-hmm. and the drama and all that instead of really, like, putting more out there. Like, I'm, like, a bomb stylist. Like, I've styled everybody in the industry. Young Thug, you styled. Yeah. You that put was him in like, a dress? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was yeah. his idea, though, right? Or um, you know, like the tight jeans, all that. We worked together and all that stuff. I was his stylist for a long time. It was right. like a couple of years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he became like a fashion icon, believe it or not. Yeah, no, people definitely look to Young Thug for uh, his style and everything. Yeah. Okay, so you're saying it didn't really help you though. For my styling game, no, definitely not. If anything, it probably made it a little worse. Yeah, and, and it lost you a friend. I don't really consider her a friend. She met on the first she day. I met her on the show. Oh, you met her on the show? Yeah. I didn't hear her like just say that friend. just now. No. She yeah, said she met like... her on the first day of filming. No. Oh, See, you ain't even paying attention. You wasn't even paying attention. The way talk, I, I'm not the way y'all talk, you and Amar. Y'all talk like y'all grew up together. And y'all... I feel you. It does sound like that. Oh, yeah, 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 we met on the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How I, how I fall victim to the storyline? <laughs> Please. Okay. Yeah, it wasn't that serious. Do but... a lot of guys you style try to push up on you? Huh? Do a lot of guys you style try to push up on you? Of course. A lot of a lot of times people hit me like, you know, trying to fake work with me and try to talk to me and stuff. But I don't really like to date people in the industry. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, that's where I work. So I don't want to mess up my money over a dude that ain't shit. Because most of these guys, like, I work with them. I see what they got going on. You and know I what I mean? I you like guys who aren't shit. Listen, girl. <laughs> you know, that's you not what I'm going it. for, but most of these guys ain't shit. So, <laughs> shit, I guess that's my type. Yeah. <laughs> she, like guys, she likes guys with like, t- uh, face tattoos, tattoos. No, nah, she's telling me my type. I, we was talking about pleasure last night when we went to lip service, and I was she telling her. too soft. I need somebody like if a if a fight breaks out, I feel to need like I want to feel protected. Like now, you, you know, he don't, he might can fight. Though. He might, yeah. You don't know if he can fight or not. I can't see that. So you profile and then you end up with one of these dudes. <laughs> yeah. You end up with one of these dudes who got dreads and face tags. You be the first to run when some shit pop off. They be the first ones to run. Yeah. Um. I get. I don't know if it was the crystal jackets. I don't know. It's just. I don't know. It's just. I wasn't. You just don't want a nice guy. Is that what it is? Yeah. I told her that too. And maybe as a stylist, you could help if you don't like the crystal shirts and jackets that he wears. Then you can. I help. just don't need a date right now, honestly. Is your daddy a thug? No. Oh. He's not. So most women like guys that he's are like, like a father. Mexican boss. Okay. Yeah, he's not really into you like all bosses this shit. though. Yeah, I do like. Yeah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, and so, what about money? Does a guy have to have money for no. you to be interested in him? I feel like you just need to have that mentality though. It's not even about money mm-hmm. with me. Like you just have to know how to move. You can have no money, but as long as you know how to move, like you got something going on, I'm happy with that. Yeah. Are you gonna go back for another season? <sighs> I don't know, honestly. I'm like really thinking about it because I just feel like season one, 
it was good look you know i was involved with my family my business my clients a little bit of drama here and there it's like this season you know they build me up and now I felt like there was everybody was just trying to fucking attack me left and right. Yeah, you they know? were definitely attacking. Even you. though y'all know that me and Pete just went on a date on the show, like y'all still trying to act like you know it's something else that is like you know it's just dragging too much, like trying to make me look messy and dramatic and all that. And I don't even like that type of shit. Like you know, I I did love in hip hop because I like the platform. Mm -hmm. I was a fan of the show. Right. I did it for sport. I'm not doing it for a fucking career choice. You know what and I'm saying? And the first season was cool. Like, And there was a lot of family drama that you had going on in the first season. And I think a lot of right. people were sympathetic to that. Right. But then this season, things just switched around. I feel like they attacked the people that got a little bit of shine. You know what I mean? Like They also made it seem like you talk about people behind their back a lot. Of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because they would cut to her saying, this person said this about you. and then Right, would... but I'm going and seeing. I I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be honest. Like it's my first time on TV. I'm normally behind the scenes, like styling people. I don't like attention like that. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't. I don't even like the cameras on me. Right. Like I get nervous as shit. You know what I mean? So when I go on set and they're telling me like, all right, JoJo, you need to talk about this. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about it. I'm not even thinking about when they edit it. How is it gonna look like if I'm saying, you know? Talk about Bobby. Now this scene, you're gonna talk about and th like I'm not thinking about you're that shit. You're just doing what you think I'm is your job. I'm just doing it, yeah. Mm -hmm. So then when I see that shit play out, I was like, damn man, they have me in here looking crazy. Mm. All right, well before we get out of here, if there's something that you could say to people that watch the show so that they can know who you are better, what would you say? Just be like, that shit is fake. I'm real. <laughs> I can't say that. Oh, okay. Yeah, I can't say that. Contractually, it is fake, though. <laughs> I'll get a call as yeah. soon as I walk out the door. Like, you think um, it's fake? I mean, it, no, it's not fake. It can't be 100% real. It's not like you're walking around and the cameras are following you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, somehow, everything has to make sense. They have to insert the stories for it all adding up. You it get to, to react how you react when you get put in situations, basically. They give you storylines and scripts, though. Like, you might end up sitting down to eat with people you normally wouldn't be eating with. or Of course not. Right. I, would, I wouldn't date certain people. I wouldn't hang out with certain people if it wasn't for, you know, let's just be completely honest. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I would, don't do that outside of my life. My life has been the same before Love & Hip Hop and after Love & Hip Hop. Would you bring your boo on the show? Hell no. Everything that goes on that shit gets ruined. That's just my opinion. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's just me it just feels like the producers plus the messiness of the people, everybody trying to get a shine. It's too much negativity. Of course, that's the energy of the show. That's how that's how they script the show. They script but you the know, show to be messy. When I first came in, I was I used to be a fan of love and hip hop. Like when I got on, I was like, yeah, I love love and hip hop. Now <laughs> I'm just like disappointed. Like I'm yeah. like, damn, bro. Look at me. I'm on TV getting my wig snatched off. Now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I was looking at yeah, the yeah. shit. I was like, yo, what the fuck is going on? So you know, I don't know. I don't know what the. I don't know what I'm gonna do. What about your store? Is the store open? Well. It's still open, but I'm working right now on collaboration. So I'm about to drop a collaboration with Kooji. Mm -hmm. Um, It's their 50th anniversary. Oh, that's yeah. nice. I love Kooji. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're doing a collaboration together. So I'm working on that. I'm working on some makeup stuff. Like, I'm working on other stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't really want to focus on the stores Okay. too much because I feel like right now... There's not a really huge market for commercial anymore. Everything yeah, the is malls really are online. all shutting down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The stores yeah. in the mall, so you have yeah. to figure out how can you bring that online. I mean, for me, it, my business would survive because I have so many clients, you know. But at the same time, it's just not it anymore. Okay. It's so much easier to just have online. So I'll probably, you know, stick to online and work on these collaborations. What does your dad say when he watches it? He doesn't watch it. My family doesn't watch the show. They disappointed in you. Yeah, they don't fuck with it. Damn. My dad is, he be on and off. Like, he's like, he just doesn't want, he's like, for what? Mm -hmm. what, what? What are you doing it for? Like, you know what I mean? There's no money in that. No real money. It, but he still supports. You know, my dad talking about, no, yeah. he don't support it no more. No, I'm saying he's still supportive of you, though. As a Here and there. He, and, he wants me, you know, I went to school for law. Like, I have a law degree. So Really? Yeah. I went to Stanford. Like, you know, he's like, what the fuck are you doing with your life? Damn, how I'm do you go from you that? that too. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he's like, how do you go from being a lawyer, having a dad that could put you on any type of job? You know, he's a, he does politics and stuff. So he's like, why the fuck are you on TV acting like a clown? So you have a law degree? Yeah. Why from are you Stanford? on TV acting like a clown? <laughs> I'm with your guy. I'm about to ask that same yeah, question. I, like know. You, I am with your father on this one. You know what it was? <laughs> when I went to school, I did not want to be a lawyer. He pushed it. I love fashion. So I was in school you know, trying to be a lawyer and, you know, I was doing all this fashion shit on the side. Mm -hmm. When I started styling Young Thug and all these people, you know, I started styling Birdman. I was like, yo, fuck this. I quit. I quit on my last year. 
I, I did the styling thing. I came back and graduated, took a break, got my degree, and then Love & Hip Hop came around. So nope. I think I just enjoyed nah, it doing it better. Work. Yeah, I just you enjoyed it. Fly as dressed attorney. <laughs> and I've I've been considering going back to it. I don't think you should consider. I think you should run back. That's a great success story. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Because I didn't know you had a degree from Stanford. Yeah. And I wouldn't have known that unless you said something. Yeah, yeah. Never in a million years would I think somebody with a degree from Stanford with a that, law degree would be on Love and Hip Hop getting their work. And that's why stuff. you got to pay attention when you watch shows like this. People are have real lives and real things that they've accomplished, but sometimes those things You're don't get highlighted it. on the show. Mm -hmm. But why play yourself like this, though? I mean, you can't want I tried fame it. Attention that bad. But here's the thing: I tried it. You know, it was like I want to do clothes, then I want to do stores, and then I was like, okay, what better platform to do it than Love and Hip Hop? Now, the store thing is, I, I didn't really like it. Love and Hip Hop is not really what I expected. I'm grateful for the opportunity. You know what I'm saying? Because I know a lot of people would love that platform. But you know, I, I, I don't know. It, it wasn't what I expected. So now I'm like really thinking, like, what what should I do next? Go back, be a lawyer. And let's be clear: Love and Hip Hop does work out for some people. Think about yeah, all the thugs you know that you could represent. That's all true. the niggas about to go to jail. I want to do criminal law. I would probably uh, do business law. Okay. There criminal law is a little, a little a intense. Yeah, it's fun, but <laughs> well, it's intense. All these dudes in the hood that's trying to open up businesses now, you know what I mean? You could help them with that. Right, I could. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. You never know. That's why right now I'm thinking, I know Love & Hip Hop definitely wants me back next season, but I don't know if I have it in me. I don't know. I think you're wasting your talents. I feel you. That's what I think you're doing. All okay. right, well, Georgia, I'm glad you were able to come up and tell your side because I know it has to be stressful when you see oh my God, yeah. yourself being talked about. So, of course, you want to come and speak your piece. Yeah. You make your father proud. You know what I mean? <laughs> damn, you're making me feel bad now. Like, you I'm should. doing something the truth bad. Hurts. Like, damn. <laughs> truth hurts. You could be doing a lot better than what you're doing. That's true. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. We'll think about it. I'm thinking about it. We'll right. see. Now I don't that the know. roots are off, let's get it going. And, exactly, and, right? And, and, uh, <laughs> are your student loans paid off? You still got all the student loans from Stanford? <laughs> you still got all the student loans from Stanford. You need to go be a lawyer. Here's the thing. Money with me has never been an issue. Oh, your it student loans paid off? Yeah, my shit is good. I ain't asked you that. Her father is rich. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Right. She'll I be never fine. had a student loan day in my gotcha. life. Yeah. It ain't, with me, it has never been about money. I just want to do something that I love. Right. I love clothes. I loved loving hip hop. So I was like, let me do what I like. Now, when reality kicks in, I was like, oh, you got to do all this shit to do it. You know, that's when I'm like, okay, I'm disappointed. Let me see if I need to do another season. If I got to go back to, you know, doing law. I don't know yet. We'll find We'll, well see. Well, we'll be watching uh, part two of the reunion <laughs> next week. So. I'm depressed now. Okay, go cool. on. Uh, we better not be disappointed <laughs> in you, JoJo. Why are you depressed? I just want you to do more for yourself. <laughs> I just don't understand what type I of I feel like you're, you're not a fan of loving hip hop, huh? I mean, I don't dislike it. But we if, have if, friends if, on there, by yeah, the way. Yeah, but if you have a law degree from Stanford, why are you choosing to be on Love and Hip Hop? Like, that really feels like I'm in, like, a bizarro mm -hmm. episode and of that's Black what, Mirror. And that's how my dad feels, too. He's I like, see. yo, you have so much going on for yourself. You know, like, why do you pick that? And I looked in the mirror the other day, and I was like, what am I doing? You're not a bozo. I thought I wanted that. What, to be a bozo? No, I think... <laughs> shut up, <laughs> Charlotte. Right. I, thought, I thought I wanted to do fashion right. and then the store and, and then Love & Hip Hop fashion. came. And I, I still love it. But it's like now I'm like, okay, I'm getting older. Is this really where it's at? You just or, have to figure it out. Yeah, I gotta figure it out. And make some decisions and strategize. Good yourself. problems to have, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I'm blessed. Like, yeah. I can't complain about nothing, so... Yeah. All right, everybody at JoJo. What's your Twitter? <laughs> Jojo Zoror for everything. And what's Jojo Zoror? Yes. Zoror. Oh, you said it right. Z-A-R-U-R. Everybody add yeah. her on Instagram and Twitter and say, take your dumb ass back to law now. <laughs> no. Don't be a bozo. <laughs> Everybody just put a stack of books emoji. Put, yeah, stack, put a stack of books. Uh, okay. All right. Please. Okay. Everybody just go put a bunch of books under uh, Jojo's Twitter and Instagram right now. Good to meet you, Jojo. Nice to meet you. All right. It's The Breakfast Club.